everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Twin Stitches Designs Podcast. My name is Julie, and I am the knitwear designer behind Twin Stitches Designs. Today, we are November 29th, and on a Sunday, um, I'm so happy, as always, to always be coming back to you guys and providing a podcast. It has been a little bit. Um, life has gotten a little crazy. I know I always say that, but this time, I can really, um, really mean that. So um, I will get into a lot of the life stuff at the end, and you guys, I can't even tell you how much knitting I have to show. I did not think I had this much knitting until I put everything together, and I'm like, okay, I need to film a podcast before, it, like, this is going to be, like, an hour and a half long. So I'm really excited to be podcasting today. I have waited for a beautiful day. It is sunny outside, and I think it's just perfect timing, day, everything. You can find me on Instagram, both as Julianne Knitter and Ravelry. I will link everything I talk about down below this video. We currently have a knit along going on in the Ravelry group with, um, I'm co-hosting this with Kay, the crazy sock lady. It is the Stash Busters Cal. It's a year long knit along that is running till December 31st. So all the details are there. I will also link the incredible YouTube video that Kay has created. So if you have any questions, please list them um, down below but go and check out those amazing videos and resources. All of, it probably will answer all of your questions. Since I've seen you last, I've released so many patterns. That's another thing that if you never wanna miss out on any of my patterns, make sure that you are signed up for my newsletter so you never miss out just in case I can't come um, right away to you guys to film a podcast. Um, since I filmed uh, The Reason It's Been a While, um, we had to put our beautiful, amazing mittens to sleep. Um, she passed away about two weeks ago. It was not an easy decision for our family, but we had to make it for her. Um, mittens was diagnosed earlier this year in May, I think, or June, with hyperthyroidism, um, but... <sighs> We adopted her about six, seven years ago, and um, she was only supposed to be about a year or two old, and it didn't bother us because she was just absolutely amazing. We didn't care how old she was. And um, she had been in the shelter for more than four months, and um, we were so happy to adopt her. But what we noticed, and the vet noticed, is they think that she was older than what they said, because usually the cases of the hyperthyroidism and how severe it got with her is usually in older cats, and she would have only been about 10 years old. so they think that she was an older cat, so which caused um, all of these complications to come even more. So what happened was um, she would get a lot of UTIs, um, urinary tract infections, um, which is common with hyperthyroidism, but usually what happens with either the medication, the food, and things, they go away and they don't come back. But um, what we were noticing with mittens is it kept coming back and back and back, and she would be in pain, and it was just not fun. So the last one that we did um, was, the last one was at the end of September. Uh, was it? No, end of October. And then that one was a severe case. Um, it wasn't a UTI, it was a different type of infection. It was a bacterial with blood in, in her system. It was just awful. So we were able to catch that she was okay for about a week or two and then from that they had mentioned that you know if she keeps getting sick that it will just be a that cycle until she passes away and with hyperthyroidism um they either pass away from heart failure or liver failure so that is not something that we wanted for her so she was fine for about a week or two and then she got sick again she started peeing on things was never using her litter um, was just not herself. She wasn't playful, um, and my, our mittens was cuddly. She loved our cuddles, and, um, for the last week, she would not barely want to be with us when, so, I'm not going to talk too much about it, because I will start crying again. Um, it was such a difficult decision, but we knew that the quality of life for her was just going to be bringing her to the vet back and forth, putting her on different medications, and um, they said that, you know, what we were doing should have been working, and since it wasn't, that there was nothing we could do. Um, in hyperthyroidism, there's no cure. So we, that's why we had to make the very, very, very hard decision to put her down. But we do know that that was the best decision for her, and she couldn't make that decision, but um, doesn't mean it was easy for us. 
And I can tell you that um, I will not be getting another beautiful fur baby for a while. I don't think my heart can take it. Um, it was just so difficult. But thank you so much for everybody who messaged us. I posted it on Instagram. And um, your love and support meant just absolutely the world to us. So thank you so much. Okay, enough of that because I'm going to start crying. So yeah, so that was the reason why um, you haven't seen my face here for a little bit. It was just too, too difficult. But you guys, I have so many finished objects. Like, I don't even know. Ah! That was my light. Ah! We're good. Ah! So since we last spoke, I had um, seven patterns that came out. Yeah, seven. The first one being this beautiful pullover. Um, this one came out as well as the mini version. So this one is my autumn tweed pullover and mini. So these are now on Ravelry as well as um, potentially on Lovecraft. I do have to double check. I think I, I don't think it's final on Lovecraft, but it should be once I upload this video. So you can purchase this pattern on Ravelry, Lovecraft, as well as the adult version. You can find it on the Netpix website. So this was knit in um, City Tweed DK. I've shown this off a lot and I was actually wearing it on the last podcast. Um, but the main color was Obsidian and then Primrose and Snowbank. So this pattern is now live and all for you. So this comes in, I want to say 10 different adult sizes, I think. So absolutely love this sweater pattern. It looks amazing on all different type of body types. It, oh, I can't even tell you like some of my test knitters, the color combinations they chose, it was just, breathtaking like so freaking gorgeous so yes so that pattern is out put that on the ground and then I also have the mini version which comes from sizes um one to two year old all the way to eight to ten year old so. super super cute and this one um I want to say is blue blood obsidian and then snowbank so the little mini version the mini version is not on the nitpicks website I haven't submitted it yet so it's been a little bonkers here. So that'll be hopefully-ish soon. Okay, so those were the finished objects that you had already seen. Um, but you guys, that's not it. Like, I have so many. And you might be wondering, oh my god, Jilly, you're wearing something new. I know. I know I am. I'm so excited about it. So Swanchito pattern, which is what I'm wearing, is coming out December 3rd. So be on the newsletter because newsletter subscribers get a special coupon code whenever I get pattern releases. So you definitely want to be in on that if you are interested in this pattern. It is knit in Coast to Coast yarn in a DK weight yarn, which is a um, beautiful 100% superwash merino. And I'm going to stand up, but I'm wearing my sweatpants, so hopefully you don't see that. I can do it. So this one, I always love bringing them up. But this one was a work in progress on the last time. I literally just needed to finish one of the cuffs. So I finished it, blocked it, wear it, and I am now living in it because I love it. The main color is rust, impression, depression glass, and then cabaret, which is like the purple. Absolutely love this sweater. The reason I called it Swanchito is you notice the yoke is very, very long, and I kind of felt like it was a poncho-ish, and a, but like it was still sweater. So that's why I figured like Swanchito, like poncho, swancho, sweater. I just, I thought it was adorable. So yeah, so this uh, sweater pattern, like I said, is coming out Thursday, this Thursday. Really excited about it, it's super comfy. Um, I, I designed the arms super long, and like I said, so it's a longer yoke, it's meant to be like, when you lift it up, it lifts up your body a little bit, but it's so comfortable. It's meant to be like, like, like a swancho, poncho, sweater, get it? I know, I'm, I think it's funny, but anyways absolutely love this sweater. So that one is coming out this week and I knit this, I want to say it is a US 6 and US 8 needle, I think. Yeah, all the details will be in the pattern, but yeah, so look out for that one. I'm really, really, really excited about it. The other patterns that came out that I'm not going to show them off because um, it would be five patterns, I came out with a Camp Fiber collection. So if you were a long time viewer of the podcast, you will notice um, in the recent like times that I was knitting, I was like, oh, I finished this project, but I can't really tell you what it is. But I tell you it's a collection. It's with Laura. 
those were all the patterns. So I came out with five different patterns and uh, I came out with two pairs of socks, a worsted weight shawl held with mohair, as well as um, a hat and mitten set. So all of those are live on Ravelry. If you are interested in going to purchase any of those, they are there now. So I've been working on this with Laura for over one year. It was crazy. It was, Laura is an incredible um, dyer as well as a friend. So it was so much fun working with her with this collection and it came to life. So you never know, maybe in the future we'll um, do another one of those. But uh, yeah, that is up live on Ravelry if you are interested in that. Okay, um, the other thing that went live is my Gift Miss Pattern Club. I think I mentioned it here. So I am designing, you will get five patterns in this collection. It is a, I called it the Gift Mist Advent Pattern Club because you will be getting um, four different patterns in the month of December and it will be on December 1st, December 8th. It's every Tuesday in December, um, finishing December 22nd. So is it the 8th, the 15th, and the 22nd? Um, and these are all meant to be in heavier weight yarns. They are going to be quick, fast, great gift knits for people. Um, if you And they will all be different types of accessories. So you can imagine hats and potentially mittens and that type of thing, cowls. Go along those lines. Um, they There will not be any socks, uh, but it's all gonna be fun, fast, and gift accessories. So uh, for the first pattern that was launched, this is the holiday hat. The girls put a hole in one of them. They have been wearing this nonstop. So this hat is knit out of Knit Picks Wonder Fluff, which I am obsessed with the Wonder Fluff. It's right here, that bottom shelf. Uh, so first for this pattern, I really wanted to knit hats out of Wonder Fluff because it's bulky weight yarn and it's absolutely incredible. Put the links to everything down below if you want to go and purchase some. So this was the first pattern that I came up with because I wanted it to be super simple, fast, but simple texture. So what I had done was, and I also wanted to cast on to figure out how many, how big I wanted it and the gauge and everything. So this was kind of my test for the pattern. And I cast on, did a two by two rib for about two, two and a half inches. And then I just did some garter bumps here and here. And then I finished off the hat and with a cute little pom-pom. We were out on a walk yesterday and one of them decided to pull on the hat. This is gonna be a fun little um, reels tutorial on Instagram. So take a look out for that one and I'll teach you how to fix this. And I finished it off and I was, I liked where the, concept was going, but I didn't like the design of it. So I thought, okay, use the numbers, use how it knit up, because I absolutely loved it, but take a different type of design. And I also didn't like how spaced out these were. They were too spaced out for me. So then what I did was I took out, I took the same yarn because the girls needed matching hats, did the two inch, and then I did this fun knit pearl texture, more spaced out. And I really liked that. It was more what I was looking for, simple texture, and then I finished it off with a pom-pom. So I really, really like that, and that's kind of, sometimes when you design, um, the first sample might not be what you want, and you know, you gotta try and rip out or whatever. So this one was kind of just like a cute, fun trial and error, and again, fix that later. <laughs> like, they, like, they've been wearing this nonstop. So yeah, this was the one for the final, and then I decided to add these fun little tags from Knit Picks. It's handmade tags and it's fold over, and I just added it and I thought it gave it such a cute touch. Like that perfect handmade touch, and really, I personally find it looks like a store-bought hat. Really love it. So that pattern is now live. So this was the super simple um, freebie pattern at the start. I wanted you guys to have a pattern to begin with um, in November. So this that's why I wanted it very simple because I wanted it to be one of those hats where, you know what, you can knit some for your entire family and they're very easy. Um, so going based on that, then my mother-in-law, um, when she was over a few months ago, had went through my stash and picked out this color of Wonder Fluff. Oh, I forgot. This is out of Sweet Pea Heather in the Wonder Fluff. 
So it's perfect for the girls. I love that shade. And this one I want to say is Wonderland, Heather. So I just finished this one off the other day and I love the crown decreases, love how it looks. And this is the adult version. So you really see the difference between the, the child and then the adult. Um, so the adult had four ridges before I finished off and bound off. And then the other ones only had three. So she picked out the um, color out of this and this is gonna be um, part of her um, Christmas gift. My mother-in-law is definitely knitworthy. She wears her socks all the time that I gave her. Um, definitely whatever she wants, except for sweaters, obviously. I don't gift those, but whatever she wants, if she wants more socks and she gets it because she is absolutely knitworthy. I really love this pattern. Like I said, within a day or two, like these are done. They're knit on bulky weight yarn on US 10 needles so fast absolutely amazing um great for anybody it's so unisex pattern and i'm planning on making more of these in different types of colors um for and i'll show off the next color that i have picked out for my father-in-law um so that's why i absolutely love this pattern and the next pattern so the first pattern is going to be coming out this tuesday december 1st and that is going to be the first like official pattern in the club so I knit these three samples um, in the last few weeks. The other finished object, like I said, I have a ton. <laughs> We're almost at like 20 minutes on just FOs. Um, yeah, so th it is a pair of socks for my husband. I n decided to get some tubes cranked out last year and I had done like a whole, um, showed you guys, but this is Knit Picks Felici in Baker Street. And then I use Knit Pick Stroll in Navy and um, Knit Pick Stroll Tweed in Rabbit Heather. He's the one who picked the colors for the heels and cuffs and toes. So uh, last time I think one of them was done, the other one wasn't. So I finished both, woven all the ends, and after this episode, he can finally wear them. I absolutely love knitting socks for my husband. Crazy knit worthy, my hubby. Like he is getting so many socks this year because I'm gonna show you my little trick afterwards. Um, he's gonna be getting a ton. So yeah, so this one I finished. I picked up and used the Kirby Werby tutorial. I um, picked up and cut in the heel and um, did the, the cuff for about two inches. I'm gonna sneeze. <coughs> I'm so sorry. So yeah, so I was able to get a full pair of men's socks with a 50 gram ball. I know it sounds crazy, but it's true. I decided to do about two inches for the cuff. So what I do is I measure out first how much I need. My husband is a US nine and a half to a US 10 men's size in shoes. Um, and yeah, so I, it came up to about four ish inches, like four and a half. And obviously my husband needs six inches and up for his legs. He need, he loves the longer leg, the better, which is the pain in the butt if you ask me. But I don't mind um, knitting a few inches of ribbing so it kind of looks and then it elongates the pair of socks. So yeah, I think that's all for that one. You guys, one last FO. Um, with the week that Nitten, uh, Mittens passed away, I was not able to focus on anything. I still had deadlines going and I still had things. I was not able to focus, so I went bonkers on dishcloths. Nuts. And you guys, now I have a ton for the Christmas season. I'm so excited. Everybody's getting dishcloths and hats this year. <laughs> so I finished um, the two left of the uh, knit picks in the twist. So this is silver. Really love it. So I also had one left. Um, what I'm going to be doing this year is everybody's gonna get a set of three dish cloths and I'm planning on having them really nice color coordinated so like themes that would go together or things that would go together and um, I'm gonna pair a swan and I'm not sure the other one that I'm gonna pair with this but it's gonna be cute sets and I get three dish cloths with one skein of dishy uh, and dishy twist multi and just dishy solid is my favorite dish cloth like yarn absolutely love it i was actually talking to my husband this morning and um i finished like a few dish cloths last year out of dishy and then i also used uh bernat just the ones i picked up at michael's and he told me even this morning as i was knitting them i'm like do you think your family would want some dish cloths and he said yeah like is this one dishy and i said yeah he's and he told me it was his favorite one because 
my husband does a lot of the dishes. <laughs> the weekend is he does dishes. During the week, I do dishes. So I kind of get a break during the weekend. Um, and he said, like, it's his all-time favorite. It just holds a lot of water, and he absolutely loves it. So I was really happy to hear that. And personally, I find knitting the dishy is so much more enjoyable than other brands. That is just my personal preference. I don't know if they really are different, but I really like it. I <clears throat> I did, I finished three cup and saucer. So this one is more like in the blues. I also use for the pattern, I use all the same one. I use them, I mean, I don't need fancy patterns for my dishcloths. I really just want regular dishcloths. Um, and I use grandma's favorite dishcloth by Vintage. I'll link it below as well, uh, the one that I use. So again, I got three out of this one. And all my dishcloths as well, I knit on a US 8. Um, and I also do knit front and back instead of the yarn over, so I don't get any holes in my dishcloths. And if ever you finish your dishcloth and it's not straight, do not worry. So take your dishcloth and just kind of stretch it out on the corners. And then when you bring it in, tug, and just make it square. That's all you do. Um, so yeah, so I finished three cup and saucer and I finished three flower girl. So I had one skein of each of those. So I finished it off and that's flower girl. So those are all done. And these are going to be going in my pile and, um, I'm going to be showing off after, um, the kind of the ideas and the gift ones that I have set aside for some gift knitting for Christmas. So I'm really excited about that. Okay, guys, that's it on the FOs in our 21 minutes. Like I said, if I would have waited even longer for this podcast, we would have been here for hours. But let's jump right in to whips. All right, I rearranged some things, brought the camera down a little bit so you can see the knitting better, and I brought everything here with me. So we are going to be going through all my whips. Um, there's one I can't show because it's the last pattern in the um, Gift Miss Advent Club. I literally just have to... Am I gonna say I just have to bind off very like it'll be done today it was supposed to be done in like two weeks ago but because of all the hoopla um obviously my brain was not there to do that pattern so that honestly I think it's my favorite that one in the wonderful of hat the wonderful of hat is just because it's so darn easy I love it today it's just water okay let me show you what I was working on the last time we I hadn't cast that on yet. I hadn't cast. They are all new whips, you guys. Okay, that's so exciting. The last time we spoke, I said that I was gonna cast on the Tote Matin yarns. I'd skeined it up and I put it in my bag. Well, you guys, I already split for the sleeves. So this sweater is gonna be very special. Um, I have a, a really fun idea for the collar and I haven't um, picked up the stitches yet but I figured I would show you where I am at at the moment. I literally just split for the sleeves and I'm fading out the colors. So you remember there is six different colors in this fade. Um, I did the first one and then the second one you see right here, that fade. So that is it. And then I just skeined up yesterday the third color that's gonna be going right here. So this is gonna be a full length sweater, full sleeves, with a gorgeous collar that I'm so excited about and I can't wait to cast on, but I'm trying to finish, like I said, that advent um, pattern needs to be done first. A few little things need to be done before I can pick this up. So this is really, really exciting. I am doing this with Positive E, so you see it's a little bit bigger than I am, but it's gonna be so comfy. Um, and I'm knitting these on my Knit Picks Interchangeable Circular Needles in the Nickel Plated, which are my favorite. Uh, on a US 9. So DK weight, US 9, super fast, easy, and simple. So it's going to be top down, obviously, and I'll come pick up the sleeves after. Really love this pattern. I'm thinking, I'm thinking by January it should be done, hopefully. Like, by January, I mean like end of January, uh, because it's going to, it's going to be a, it's going to be a, a beast to do because of the collar idea that I have and I want it to be like 
long. I'm so excited. I can't wait. I've had this idea for this sweater for over a year. I've had the yarn since April. It's the longest I've ever had yarn for and I felt god awful. But she had sent me two sweater quantities and the other sweater was the Sand and Ocean cardigan that I had finished back in July. July. Yeah, I finished that back in July. So yeah, so this was the second pattern that we were working on. And the yarn is Tola Matin Yarns in her Halta uh, Fade set, which is all grays and so beautiful. Then these are the next three. Hopefully you don't hear too much. My husband, I, I, I hear him cleaning. That is a sound I can always hear. Like I hear him doing the dishes. Is there no better sound than that? So anyways, so these are the colors. So this is, will be the third, fourth, fifth, and then the sixth. So it'll end in that color. And I'm debating even adding pockets to this. Like I'm going all out on this sweater. I really want to challenge myself with this sweater on my designing skills. I'm not sure yet on the pockets, but I'm debating it. And if this is not a Julie fade, I don't know what is. Like, Lorian hit this out of the park for me. Oh, it's so beautiful and I just want to work on it, but I know myself, I have to finish other things because when I pick this up, like I don't work on anything else. I just love, love working on it. So yeah, so since the last time we spoke, I cast it on, split for the sleeves, and now I stopped there, I cut off the yarn, and I need to start on the third skein. But uh, like I said, I'm putting this aside until, until I finish my other like deadline things. This is in my French Supply Co bag, which was gifted to me by one of my incredible friends a few years ago, and I absolutely love it. It holds sweater quantities great. Sadly, I know now they are out of business. They don't make bags anymore. But I do know that a lot of people kind of make like faux French Supply Co bags that you can buy, which are still absolutely amazing. So yes. Yeah. That is one of my whips. And I, like I said, I'm so excited to working on that and it's going to be an amazing sweater. I'm, I wanna push myself more in 2021 with my designs. I really want to step out of my comfort zone. Um, this one was more out of my comfort zone is a full color work yoke with a different type of construction. So I really wanted that, this encouraged me to step more out of my comfort zone for those designs. All right. Uh, the next up, let me show you the different dishcloths. So of course I finished one and I cast this one on this morning. This one is Dishy Multi in Herb Garden. So this is the tag. And like I said, I literally just cast this on. And I'm working, as I said uh, previously, on US 8's, just the grandma's favorite dishcloth uh, out of vintage. And what I'm thinking of doing is putting a swan and then putting the green and then this green with flower. So flower girl, herb garden, and swan as a beautiful kit. And the white that I'm talking about, swan, is right here. So I think that these would pair really nicely. So as soon as I finish three of these, three kits are already done for Christmas which is super exciting. And I'm hoping what I'm gonna be doing is posting kind of a, like a reels or video on how I'm gonna package them up and showing you different type of color combinations, all of that I wanna do um, for the month of December just in case you also want to knit dishcloths. But yeah, I'm midway through a row and I'm loving knitting dishcloths. I might as well just finish that little tiny row. Um, yeah, so I am hoping to finish all of these dishcloths by mid-December. I'm going to be putting in another Knit Picks order for more different colors because I do need different blues to go with the cup and saucer. Um, and I need, yeah, I'm going to be stocking up big time on Dishy because I love it. As soon, done. As soon as... I sit down at night and I don't want to work on anything complicated. I find dishcloths are gratifying, super fast, and they make amazing um, gift knits as well as just around the house. 
So that is in my Daisy Girl Company bag, which was gifted to me by Sherry last year. And is my peekaboo bag, which I love. So like I said, I'm going bonkers on dishcloths because they're exactly what I need this time of year. Love them. My last whip of what I can show is a pair of socks. My sock knitting mojo has not been strong. And what I decided to do is one of my friends has a circular sock machine. So what that happens is they knit them up in tubes and you do like I showed you previously on the other pair of socks. Um, you cut in the heel, the toe, and the cuff, and you just knit those and the rest of the sock is already done. So I paid her to knit me up some tubes and I'm gonna be showing them off right now. So they are almost all knit pick static because that is my favorite sock yarn. Absolutely obsessed with knit pick static. It is a self patterning yarn and is just glorious. Seriously, I love it that much. And she knit up these tubes. Her gauge and tension, amazing, 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 amazing. I found the ones that I had done last year um, were so loose that it was, it, it's awful. But these are so tight, they're gonna fit like a glove. So this, so this is what happens is it knits up in a big long tube and usually out of one tube I can make two pairs of socks. So each one of these I'm gonna be able to make some socks and I wanted to get them to um, tubed up this year, knitted, so I can do Christmas gifts and it goes way faster. So this is my trick to getting a ton of socks done in so little time. This colorway is Static and Seascape. And this is how this one knits up. And I'll put the links to it below if you would like to go purchase some. I also love how the repeats are very long. So like from here to here, that's one repeat. I love how amazing they are. I also knit, like, um, hand knit myself a pair of peppercorn out of the static, so that is up on my um, Instagram. Love those, my husband actually wore them this morning for the first time. Uh, yeah, so that's what those are, and let me show you the one that I'm working on at the moment. I am working on this one, which is, uh, this one is Neptune. If I'm not mistaken, yes it is. And it's these deep blues. Love, 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 love it. So you might be wondering, Julie, what in the world are you doing? So I decided to cut up the sock blank and this will be one. So this is all that one sock is. Okay, so this is what it looks like once I cut it up. And what I do is I'm gonna pick up the stitches. I'm not even worried. Her gauge is so tight that I'll just be able to pick this up. I will pick up the stitches, knit a toe. I'll go on the other end, cut this excess um, fabric off, pick that up, knit the cuff, and then I'm gonna find my heel. I cut it in and do an afterthought heel. That's it, that's all I do. So this one, what I did was I am currently working on the toe and I am using navy, Knit Pick Stroll in Navy, which I think is the absolute perfect match for this um, colorway. I'm knitting them on my 2.25 um, millimeter needle on my High High Sharp 32 inch. It's a little bit of a mess. And then what I did was I had two needles and I decided to pick up right away the stitches so as soon as my toe is done, I'm gonna come up here and I'm going to working on my, um, the uh, cuff. So I'll be able to work on that right away. And I just put it on the bottom and I don't find it bothers me at all. And then I have these little stoppers, which are also from Knit Picks, which are amazing. So really love that. Oh, I forgot to show you guys. I have a little tiny stitch marker. It's a little tiny cactus. I mean, how cute is that? So these are gonna be gift knits. Um, this one, this pair is gonna be for my husband because he absolutely loves. Well, actually my husband is getting one pair of socks out of all of the static and then all the other ones are probably gonna go to my dad. Um, he is crazy knit worthy. So he's like, he even folds them up on top of his bureau. Like he is 
so adorable with his socks that he can get as many as he wants. And let me show off the other one. Um, so for an example, this one is going to be the other pair of socks that are going to be out of Neptune. So that's how much I had left. Like it is a lot. Uh, this one is another one of my my favorites. It's beekeeper Beautiful Love all of those colors Absolutely love it. This one is terrarium more greens This one is Boulder, which is grays with like a little like light purplish blue. It is just beautiful. The reason I love static so much is I absolutely love the self patterning. Um, and also I love that they're unisex colors. Like a lot of these are, can go to men, women, whoever, whatever. Um, and they're amazing. So I really love that. And I don't find that there's a lot of sock yarn out there that are meant kind of for unisex. So. Just love how they knit up, how they work up, how, just love them. And I forgot to mention that Static is a 75-25 uh, superwash wool, 25% nylon. It is 437 yards per 100 grams. So I really love that. And the last one my husband wanted me to um, skein up is a Stroll um, hand painted. This is Home Movie. So this one is 462 yards per 100 grams, 75.25 base again. And this one, it doesn't self-pattern. It's more of a micro stripe. Ooh. And he really likes these like kind of colorful colors, so. Really love how that one worked out. So yeah, so those are all the sock knitting tubes that I'm going to be doing from time to time. And I'm also going to be doing a Instagram post on showing you the colors that I choose for the Knit Pick Stroll and Stroll Tweed that would kind of go along with those um, that are perfect for heels, toes, and cuffs. So that is all going to be coming very soon. And you guys, that's it for my wits. I have two things that I'm going to be knitting up soon. I showed you the Wonder Fluff hat. This one is for my mother-in-law. And then I chose um, Abyss Heather which is another one of their brand new colorways. So I wanted to knit up another sample in their newer colorway range. So these two are the brand new colorways um, in the Wonder Fluff range. So this one is like a deep, deep, deep navy blue, which I think would pair beautifully with that. So this is gonna be a hat for my father-in-law and then that one's gonna be for my mother-in-law. So this one by the next podcast will probably be done because it just knits up so fast. Um, like I said, within a day or two, they're done, which is amazing. And I have some charcoal in different colors, so those are all gonna be, um, I'm planning on gift knitting for my grandmother and her husband, so those are all gonna be done for Christmas, which are super exciting. Okay, so the last thing that is going to be on my needles for um, December is going to be a pair of socks. I've not knit myself a pair of socks in a while, like actually knit, because I've just, I don't know, my sock knitting mojo's not there, but this I definitely have to knit up. So me and my knitting group have all decided to purchase um, some self-striping socks uh, from Area 51 Fibers. This one is the Christmas, Christmas the Movies. If you have it and you haven't opened it up yet and you want to look away, now is your chance because I'm going to be showing it off. Do you look away? Looking away? This is going to be the pair of socks. So they are self-striping and um, they have all different colors. I don't know how many. I wanna say it's 25 different stripes. So you would the concept is that you would knit a stripe every day, so leading up to Christmas, and then you would have a pair of socks. I did this last year with a cozy knitter, um, but these were more affordable than the cozy knitter. So these were in, I love the theme that it's kinda of Christmas movie. And when I received it and I opened it up, I absolutely love that they look like Christmas. I love the greens and the pinks and the reds and love it. Like this is Christmas. So Christmas. I'm really excited and I wanted to keep it all like this before um, I showed it off to you guys. I don't know if I'm going to be casting it on on the first just because I have so many things I need to get done, but I do want to at least cast them on, I think. 
I just love it. I love Christmas socks. And um, I know that my knit group got the um, Christmas with Gilmore Girls. So I wanted the Christmas in the movies because I've never watched Gilmore Girls. <laughs> so absolutely love this one. I'm really, really excited to cast these on for Christmas. Holy, holy guacamole. That is all the knitting. I think we're at like 45 minutes or 50 minutes just of knitting. Like I said, it, is, it was going to be big. So if you are just here for the knitting, thank you so much. And um, make sure you like and subscribe for the podcast. I, I blanked out for a second. Um, and I hope that once we get to 1,500 subscribers that I'm going to be doing a giveaway. So we are almost there. Um, and when we get there, I'll doing a fun, fun giveaway for you guys. So thank you so much. And if you want to hear about life in general, well, stick around. I'm going to take a sip of water and then we'll dive right into that. Okay, there's a big elephant in the room that I didn't mention at the start. I chopped off my hair. I needed a change and um, I've just been wanting to chop off my hair and I saw a photo and I was like, ooh, I've never chopped my hair that short. So I decided to go to my hairdresser and I asked her to chop it off and she, she was so excited. She's like that, Julie, you, you need to do it. So I really like it. Um, I'm on the fence if I would do it again because I'm used to long hair. So it was a little um, scary for me to chop it all off, but I really like it. My husband loves it. So that's all that matters. <laughs> um, really, really like it. I think it's cute. It's different. It does such a big change. And I mean, it's hair, it grows. So why not, you know, why not chop it off? Um, life in general, I am going to be doing Vlogmas this year on YouTube. I'm really excited about it. My husband already um, finished off uh, kind of the intro for Vlogmas. So it's gonna be really fun. I'm super excited. My plan is to do every two to three days. Um, so I won't be having a vlog every single day uploaded. My plan is to be doing like, like I said, every two, three days, I'm, I don't want to set like a, a date, but you will, you will get content from me leading up to Christmas. Um, I am planning on doing like, like in one vlog, you'll see like, and I'll put in the title December one, two and three. So you'll have like each day kind of snippets of each day uploaded in one vlog. So they may be longer vlogs, but you'll get fewer of them. So I don't, I cannot commit to a vlog every single day because I have children who are crazy and I need to take care of them. So sometimes I cannot um, upload that many. So I'm really excited. It will be my first year doing Vlogmas on YouTube. Usually uh, last year, I did it on Instagram stories. So this year, like I said, it'll be the first year I really do Vlogmas and I'm super excited for it. I hope you guys are too and I hope you like it. Let me know down in the comments. I uh, Yeah, so that is going to be a lot of fun. I'm waiting for my advent uh, swap with Jill, one of my friends. Uh, sh we swapped out advent calendars. So we kind of did our own mini skeins and our own goodies. So I'm waiting for that and you'll see me upload, um, opening those up every day. It's just gonna be a lot of fun, you guys. And there's just a crap ton of knitting that's been happening. I never noticed how much there was until I put everything together for this podcast. I'm like, holy crap, I am knitting a crap ton. <laughs> So yeah, we go out every single day. We go out walking um, with the girls. They absolutely loved going walking. So when it's nice out, we go walking, I'm trying to work out more, trying to get into a routine, trying to normalize things. Cause right now in my area, we are down to a one household bubble. So what that means is um, we are not allowed to see anybody that is not within our own house. So I can only see my husband and my children. I am not allowed to go see my parents or his parents. So it makes it a little difficult. So that's why every day we're trying to be outside and we're trying to do different things, with activities with the girls, um, really trying to change that up because it just does the world of good to everybody. So hopefully we get out of that phase very soon, but it's for the safety of everybody and I'm okay with it for now. Hopefully it won't be too, too long. But yeah, I think, you know what guys, I think that's it. I think I've rambled on along. I hope you enjoyed this podcast episode and I appreciate you guys coming every single time. So thank you so much. And as always, you guys, happy knitting. Until next time, bye.